pastor. I shared with you a minute ago that the Lord put three people on my heart during the worship time. Kind of funny because today we're talking about hearing from the Lord. One of them is Sharon Wallen, and I need to know where she is. Is she in the room right now? Okay, Sharon. The Lord knows that you love him, and you know that he loves you. But today, he knows that you need a fresh touch of his love. And he's telling you that what he's going to do is give you a very real experience, not just the knowledge, but a real experience experience of his love. Pray that. Praise the Lord. Bill, the next one is you. It's faithfulness. The Lord the Lord has been faithful, but this is a season in which you are going to experience breakthroughs, many breakthroughs, one right after the other, that are just going to prove a greater level of his faithfulness to you. It's faithfulness. Praise God. Joanne, you who smile, rejoice, and dance, and we would never, ever know that there is any care on your heart, burden, or fear. But however small the fear is, it could be about the future. The Lord is going to completely substitute any fear of the unknown with his overwhelming Tell them that I love them. Tell them that I love them. And tell them that I love them. Those words are words that I heard the Lord speaking to me one morning as I was about to wake up. Not my words, his words. Tell them that I love them. It's not hard to tell you that he loves you because I carry that love that he has for you. It's overwhelming. In 2019, one week before I was to return to Portsmouth, I was awake, still in bed, with eyes closed, and about to open when suddenly I felt a gentle wind to my right ear, followed by the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. I was about to leave, return to Portsmouth, and he was speaking to me about the mission. He began with my name, Esther. He ended with the mandate, tell them that I love them and that I'm coming soon. God was speaking to me in that still small voice, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, one of many ways that God has a way of communicating to those who know him. Sidney Farrell spoke on the still small voice in her sermon not that long ago, 1 Kings 19. The prophet Elijah, funny you mentioned Elijah, 
tall keeping. But the prophet Elijah stood on a mountaintop waiting to hear God's voice. And we know that God's voice was not carried in the wind, the fire, or the earthquake. Verse 12 says, and after the fire, there was the soft whisper of a voice. When Elijah heard it, he covered his face with the cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, what are you doing here? That still, small voice of the Holy Spirit, folks, it's not vocal. It's not audible. It is the voice of God's spirit speaking to one's own spirit with understandable words, much like the words that are thoughts running in one's own mind. The human mind does not recognize the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's because the Holy Spirit does not reside in the human mind where thoughts are formed. The Holy Spirit resides in one's human spirit once it is born again. And one is born again as soon as one has made room for Jesus to live in one's heart, which is the word the Bible uses often to mean the human spirit. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks what Jesus gives him. I'm going to say that again. When the Holy Spirit speaks, he speaks only what Jesus gives him. When Jesus and the apostles were having a final meal together before Jesus went to the cross, he told his followers that he would ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to be with them. He didn't want them to get lonely, missing him. To be with him meant to live in them. In John 14, 16, Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper who will stay with you forever. He is the spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world, those who do not believe, cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you, you know him because he remains with you and is in you. He is in you. He told them that the Holy Spirit would help them to remember all that he had done and taught them. See John 14. He told them that the Holy Spirit would not speak on his own authority, but that the Holy Spirit, again, would only speak what Jesus had given. Then he said something very important to keep in mind about what and how the Spirit speaks. Jesus told them that the Holy Spirit takes what Jesus gives him to say and speak it again. What Jesus said about the Holy Spirit speaks to a similar way as to what Jesus said about what he speaks. Many occasions, many times, Jesus told his apostles and the crowds who questioned him that he did not speak on his own authority. He spoke only what he heard the Father speaking. Jesus told them that everything he taught them came from the Father who sent him. See John 14. These scriptures are most important 
because they reveal that God has integrity. God is one God, three persons in community, in unity, all saying the same thing. In communion, in unity, all saying the same thing. As the Father, the Son, and as the Holy Spirit, God speaks the same to all people. The Father does not say one thing, Jesus another, and the Holy Spirit another. They do not contradict one another, nor do they contradict themselves. This is so important to get a hold of because not understanding this is the reason the whole human race got in trouble in the first place. The first chapter of John. Oh, yeah, what trouble? Well, the voice of Satan carried by the snake completely twisted what God had spoken to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, twisted. So when learning to hear God's voice, it's important to remember that God's voice always agrees with what is written in his word. The first chapter of John reminds us that Jesus not only represents the word of God, but he himself is the word of God. So be on the alert. Anything we read, hear, or envision that does not agree with God's written word is not of God. Now, this is a good place to share a testimony from Gladdy, who is on our worship team, okay? And she shared something about how this works and has worked in her life. Gladys shared that she left the UK four years ago disheartened when she couldn't secure a job and the grades that she wanted from uni. So at her lowest point, God drew her close to his word. He spoke to her through the book of Joshua in the story of the Battle of Ai. God told her, that he would give her victory in the land of defeat. One year prior to her return, her cousin prophesied that she would return to the UK. Is she back, folks? <laughs> yeah, she's back to Portsmouth. She's graduated, and she has a great job close to church, close to work. She's got a master's degree. OK. The prophecy, the word, agreed. So praise God and thank you, Gladdy, for sharing. We need to be very careful to properly discern what God's voice is because there are many voices in the spirit realm. God's voice is one of them, but as the book of Genesis makes clear, Satan and his servants and followers can also speak to people. So now, hearing the audible voice of God. From his first moment on earth, man was meant to walk and talk with God. God is a relational God. On the day both Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree of the knowledge of both good and evil, it is written, that the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Relational God. The same passage in the third chapter of Genesis tells us that the Lord had called to Adam saying, where are you? Adam answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid of you, and I hid. These words are portions of a conversation between God and Adam in the Garden of Eden. And in this instance, 
what we find is an audible exchange between God and man. Audible. God spoke audibly to mankind throughout the days of the Old Testament. To Noah, God said, build a boat for yourself of good timber, make rooms in it, and cover it with the tar inside and out. To Abraham, he said, I will give you many descendants, and they will become a great nation. To Moses, when the Lord spoke to Moses in the land of Egypt, he said, I am the Lord. Tell the king of Egypt everything I tell you. To Samuel, the Lord came and stood there and called as he had before. Samuel, Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, verse 10. To Isaiah, God said, whom shall I send? Who will be our messenger? Isaiah answered, I will send me. These are all examples of God speaking to individuals in an audible voice, all taken from stunning stories of how God steadily labors to win back mankind from a fall that cost the human race a personal relationship with God and the eternal home that waits for those who choose life with him. And right there, I'm going to say again, tell them, and I'm telling you, that God loves you, and he's coming again soon. He loves you, without a doubt. Without a doubt, he loves you. So, one more thing. Don't forget that all the people who were alive when Jesus was alive and heard him speak, what did they hear? They got to hear his audible voice. Wouldn't that have been wonderful to hear the tone, <laughs> the inflection of his voice? Well, the words he spoke to his disciples and the words he spoke to all the people he encountered the good, the bad, and the ugly, many of whom were healed and changed. The bad for good, and the ugly for beautiful. <laughs> and now these words are found in the New Testament for all to read. To Simon and Andrew, Jesus said, come, follow me. To a man with a shriveled hand, Jesus said, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. There's arthritis in the room, and there are hands that need to be completely restored. Stretch them out. Stretch them out. The Lord is here. To the good thief on the cross, Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Some need to be forgiven for things that you feel you need to be forgiven. But you know what? God says, I said on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You weren't there. I wasn't there to ask for forgiveness. But he forgave ahead of time. If you haven't said, I'm sorry, I repent. I want to change my life for the better. You can do that right now in your heart with your still small voice and the Holy Spirit with his still small voice is going to give you one word. What do you think that word is? Forgiven. Forgiven. Say, I am forgiven. Again, I am forgiven. So, listen. I was just a young junior high school teacher 
when God called me to begin a prayer ministry on campus. One day, I was on the way to lunch when I literally felt a tap on the shoulder. I looked around, looked around. There wasn't anyone there. But that tap on the shoulder was followed by the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking for Jesus. The Holy Spirit was speaking for Jesus. Sometimes he's speaking for the Father. The Father says, my child, my son, my daughter, to me. And I know it's the Father. And Jesus, he calls me by name, Esther. Sometimes he calls me darling. It's amazing. What does he call you? Anyway, the still small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking for Jesus. Go get your lunch, come back to your classroom, and be still. I did. Nothing happened. This happened for five weeks straight. But on the sixth week, God gave me such a hunger to have another teacher join me for lunch and prayer that I realized it was God. God found me a prayer partner. He began meeting with me every Wednesday for lunch and prayer. Within weeks, a shocking tragedy became the open door for a school-wide prayer fellowship to begin. A young man had been brutally stabbed numerous times while waiting his turn to order lunch at the Jack in the Box after a football game. He hung on for days between life and death. His mother, one of our teachers, Jewish, not Christian, asked us to pray. Upon invitation, 27 teachers showed up to pray for him in my classroom after school one afternoon. Danny, well, Danny, who was not expected to live, recovered, and lived to graduate from uni, get married, and raise a family. That was the beginning of an on-campus ministry that saw student Bible studies form. Teachers, janitors, counselors, and parents came to Christ. Other schools in our district became affiliated as we became known as believers on campus. A high school student who was struck by an SUV while crossing the street died in ICU, but was raised to life when her Bible class showed up to pray in ICU for her in the hospital. Another teacher whose sports car was pinned under a huge lorry that had fallen over an overpass onto the motorway below was not given seven hours to live. She's still alive. She lived more than seven years, and that was like maybe 40 years ago. Several ministries partnered to help teachers organize training conferences every fall. The Lord gave us favor, great favor. And my prayer is that I pray the Lord give us great favor here. Lord God, release the grace and power to act on your word. Let us have ears to hear your call. Like Samuel, let us pray. Speak, Lord, we are listening. Say that. Speak, Lord, we are listening. Again, speak, Lord, we are listening. Now, about the many other ways to hear for those with open ears. God speaks to us in so many ways. One Christian author with the gift of knowledge made a list of some of the many other ways God speaks. His list includes dreams, visions, angels, trances, impressions, memories, flashbacks, divine revelations, visitations, scents, and smells, divine translation. 
I was transported in a dream once. I w was somehow in the Philippines. I was in a dark living room with six Muslim women. How did I know they were Muslim? They were fully covered in black with the little slit showing eyes. I was speaking. I was speaking, and they were attentive. I was speaking a long time. And when, that's not hard for me, but. <laughs> but anyway, I came to an end. And all of a sudden, I asked in English, what language is that? What was I saying? What was I speaking? And one of the women said, Tagalo. And Tagalo is one of the languages of the Philippines. So after she asked and after I got the answer, I was suddenly just back in my room. That's called transportation. It happened to the Apostle Philip in Ethiopia. All these ways of hearing and seeing God fall into the category and realm of the prophetic. The Apostle Paul urged all believers to yearn and to pray that they would grow and mature in the prophetic. He said, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. That verse is found in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Now we have to remember that the mind, oh, that the most often quoted Bible verse on love was penned by the Apostle Paul in the 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. In it, he said, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but not have love, what am I? Again? Again. So those two scriptures, one, Paul encourages us to pray for the gift of prophecy. But God balances out those gifts with love. Because love has to be the foundation of everything that we think, say, and do on his behalf. Why? Because God is love. And everything we do must start from that place. So in conclusion, I'd like to share a couple of testimonies close to home. One that CLC member Linda Rodell gave me to share, and another, a testimony that was given to me by a Muslim background believer who is now an elder at a church in Purbrook and is discerning a call to ministry. Linda shared that she had been living in Kent and gave her heart to the Lord after a divorce. But she said that it was not until she came to CLC, which was Tanger Road Baptist Church at that time, that she heard God speak to her through an alpha coach. He encouraged her to forgive her husband. Her heart ached with deep, chronic, and physical, physically painful bitterness. The Alpha Coach encouraged her to say out loud, I forgive him. She probably used his name, right? I forgive him. She did, and instantly she experienced release and a peace that has never been marred by bitterness again. The Holy Spirit, through the coach, was met with Linda's obedience and she was set free from bondage. So God spoke to that coach and set her free. Now, 
as for the Muslim background believer. This is amazing. Like the Apostle Paul had been a radical, in his case he was trained a hardcore fundamental Islamic jihadist. He converted to Christianity through a vision and a visitation by the man in white. Who's the man in white, folks? Yeah. Many Muslim converts report having similar experiences. The testimony this man gave me to share is that one night he got up from bed, and when he went back to bed, a stunning, bright, multicolored light filled the room. He sat up in bed and could not move. He said it was as if he was in another world. He heard the audible voice of Jesus say to him, don't worry, you are with me. He held this man in that state for two hours, experiencing the overwhelming love and embrace of his Savior. Jesus said to him, do not do what Peter did, which he understood was to take his eyes off Jesus when Peter was walking on water. He understood that Jesus also meant, do not deny me. Peter denied Jesus three times. But he was forgiven, right? Okay. Throughout the two-hour trance, this man who once persecuted Christians saw and heard Jesus, who comforted him and assured him that God loves him. Jesus wants all to know that God loves them. There is no sin so great that he did not cover it at Calvary. If you want to hear God's voice with open ears, simply pray. Speak, Lord, I am listening. Say that with me again. Speak, Lord, I am listening. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads. Lord, speak. We are listening. We are overwhelmed by the purity and power of your forgiveness. We who perhaps have kept you at a distance ask you to forgive us. Hold us to visit and keep us true. We long to hear your voice. Teach us and help us to make time for you so that we can get to know you as deeply as you desire. Speak, Lord. We are listening. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to know, in fact, I would like to see everyone meet me after. For a very quick, I've brought oil to bless you with a fresh prayer for a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit and for grace to be able to hear the Lord more deeply or to hear him for the first time in your life if you have not, audible or a still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, I love you, and God loves you. Amen. Amen.